Hey, what's going on guys? This is the second official tutorial in the libgdx series. Basically, uh, this series is just going to be about random topics in libgdx um, to help you become a better game producer um, and really just something that you might find helpful here, here and there. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a sprite to the screen. Um, this is just going to cover the basics, nothing advanced, like using a texture packer that's going to be a separate video. Um, this is just the super duper basics so that you can get one picture, draw it to the screen, and have your whole day bring a smile to the face. That makes no sense, but whatever, whatever. Orthographic camera, let's get that. Orthographic camera. Camera, we're just going to call it camera. Uh, we also need a sprite batch. And we also need a sprite. Alright, um, if I was making a game, I would put the private modifier in front of it. However, this is just a tutorial, and I'm making things easy and bare bones so that they're simple to understand. So I'm not doing that right now. I'm also doing this in the tester main class. So this is the very, very main class that's called in libgdx. Um, if you were making your own game, obviously this would be in a different class. But this is just for tutorial purposes. So we have these three things. And these are the only three things that we need to draw something to the screen. The camera is going to let you see something on the screen. The batch is going to draw it to the screen. And the sprite is the actual object. So um, your sprite is going to be the actual object, that's going to be the PNG file. The batch is going to project that PNG file to the screen, and the camera is going to help us visualize that. So let's go ahead and initialize that within the create camera equal new orthographic camera. And this takes in the width and the height for the camera. Uh, we're just basically going to take the width and the height of our window in the desktop, so this is basically going to be 800 and 480. So, gdx.graphics.getWidth, and then gdx.graphics.getHeight. Oh my god, can't type. There we go. Um, batch is really easy to set up. New sprite batch doesn't take in anything, and then sprite is going to take in a new texture. New sprite, a new texture, which is going to point to the asset that we have um, that we're going to project to the screen. In this case, it's going to be this arrow right here that we're going to project to the screen. Um, nothing too fancy about it. And also, if you're going to be putting a file into um, Eclipse to render and draw to the screen like this, you want to go and put it into the tester game Android file, uh, Android project, and then go to assets and then just dump it right in there. So that's going to be arrow.png. There we go. So now we've initialized everything, we've got our variables, we can go ahead and we can draw it. Uh, let's tell the batch, the thing that's going to be drawing the sprite, what we're going to project to. So set projection matrix, uh, camera.combine. So you don't need to really worry too much what this means, um, as long as you know when to use it. And that's super simple. You're just going to use this once in your render method, and you're set. You don't have anything else to worry about after that. This is an advanced topic, um, but don't stress it too much. It's basically telling the batch what to project to, and that's the camera. All right. Um, now, one thing that you should remember is whenever you're going to be start, whenever you're going to be drawing something with batch, you need to call batch .begin. And now we can start drawing. The way you draw, super easy method, sprite dot draw, and then that takes in the batch. And now that we're done drawing, we can 
call sprite that end. Otherwise, we get like a weird uh, error exception. Uh, oh, batch that end. Okay. Um, this is gonna draw the sprite, which is the arrow, to the screen. Let's just see how that looks. It's gonna look terrible. There we go. Not only is it too big, but it's in the wrong position as well. So let's make it smaller. A right here in the create method. So we're gonna say sprite dot set uh, size. Um, just throw in something random, 120 and 30. That should be about right. And now position. I want to spend a little bit of time on position because when you set up your camera, uh, which is what you're viewing, you have your original grid looking like this, where your point of origin zero zero. That's going to be right at center. It's not going to be like right up here. If it, if like if you were using the Android SDK, it's not going to be down here, which would make sense. It's going to be right in the center. So you got to base your calculations on that. So the whole width of the window is going to be 800. So that means this is going to be 400 long. I meant I meant that to be 400. This is going to be 400 here, 400 here, giving you a total width of 800. I hope that makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to say negative 400 and zero as the position. Sprite dot set position uh, negative 400 and zero. So now this should render perfectly. Nothing too crazy. That, that's absolutely beautiful. Um, now we can begin to have some fun with it and draw it to the screen so it can be moving sideways. Um, that's really it as far as drawing the sprite goes. Uh, again, this tutorial was meant to be super basic and nothing too advanced. I'm going to create tutorials um, on the advanced part of it and on animated sprites. However, uh, for the most part, this is just meant to be super basic, just a super basic concept. However, we're just going to have some fun right now and move that arrow so that it can demolish our enemies, of course. Let's have a, a private float x position. And that's going to be equal to negative 400. I'll set that right here so that right when it's created, it's at negative 400. And then we're going to increase that every, I don't know, every second we can have it increase by 50. So um, if you watched my delta time tutorial, this is exactly what it covers moving something each second. So let's do that. Uh, x position is equal to x position, which is just the past x position, plus uh, it's going to be again 50 units per second. So 50 times gdx graphics that get out the time. Uh, I feel like that's one too many parentheses. Uh, no, 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 that's right. All right, let's run that and aha, aha, we have to set the, set the position as well in the rhythm method. Yeah, now we have the right X position going for us. I just need to set it. So sprite that sets position X position. X position. Oh, that sounds cool. Um, and zero. Now this will definitely be an arrow to the knee right now. Ah, I'm dead. Okay. Um, that's deadly. I should close this before it hurts anyone. Okay. So that's the tutorial on basic rendering to a screen. Hopefully this helped you. If you're new to LibGDX, if you are, uh, if you were already a pro at LibGDX, then this probably wouldn't help you too much, but I do have better videos coming, so stay tuned. Peace.